I rise today to honor you and to congratulate you. Be proud, but be humble. Now bear with me just for a moment as I share with you a very personal story and end with a recommendation, but I promise I will be brief. You see, I was born in the first half of the last century, and I started my college career, believe it or not, in 1964. And on that first day of class, I looked forward, knowing that it would be an eight long years before I graduated with my doctorate and could begin my practice. Eight years. I can remember closing my eyes and just hoping, hoping against all hope and wishing that I could fast forward beyond all lectures beyond all assignments, beyond all quizzes, beyond all midterms, and especially beyond all final exams. I wished I could fast forward to the day I was going to graduate so I could begin my career. Let me say here and now that I was naive. Essentially, I was wishing my life away. I was wishing away eight years, eight very productive years of my life. How foolish. So my recommendation to you this afternoon is to savor every moment in class, because if I could go back, I would, and savor each moment. Each nugget a professor shared with me, everything I discovered on my own, every lecture, every assignment, I would have loved to go back and relive those eight years. So I think I understand the student predicament after all of these years, this my 44th year in higher education. I understand that you're looking forward to graduation. You're looking forward to beginning your practice. But remember, take everything slowly and treasure each moment. Remember upon graduation, not only do you have the opportunity to practice but we're also going to give you that very special opportunity to repay your student loans. <laughs> so don't rush too fast into that abyss. I'd like to close just by saying once again, congratulations and Godspeed, but don't speed too fast. Welcome to Wingate University and welcome to the third annual Doctor of Physical Therapy Professional Commencement Ceremony. When I had the brainchild of doing a professional commencement ceremony about six or seven years ago at the university where I uh, began doing these, these processionals, they questioned me and said, commencement ceremony? Commencement's at graduation. What do you mean, commencement? And I explained to them, if you look up the word commencement, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of 42 fine folks sitting here in front of you who you're here to, to celebrate their beginning of the profession. And we are really excited about what's gonna happen today and what's, what's ahead of them in their future. Today, we'd like to get right to our keynote speaker because he has some very important, important points to bring to them and challenge them and let them be thinking about what it is that they're going to be doing in this, prof this great profession. So I would like to first tell you it's my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker today. And I'll tell you a little bit later today why it's such a privilege, but it is certainly a privilege. Dr. Ben Massey is a long-term resident of North Carolina, born and raised is what he'll tell you. It's what he told me. He makes his home in Grassy Creek up in the Asheville area, I believe. Ash County area. He graduated from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, with a bachelor's degree in physical therapy. He's been a physical therapist for 40 years, treating primarily in the acute care hospital setting. After his practice career, he accepted a position as the executive director of the Board of Physical Therapy Examiners in Raleigh. Now this is the board that serves to make sure licenses are complete, correct, and policed, basically. So he is the person in charge of all the licensed physical therapists in North Carolina maintaining their license in, in all aspects. He remained there from 1996 as the executive director through today 
and he has announced his official retirement to be effective as of this August, so we're sad to see him go. He's also been very involved in our professional organization, particularly first in the North Carolina Physical, Th Physical Therapy Association, where he was the state president in the 1980s, representing all physical therapists from North Carolina. And from there, he went on to the national organization, the American Physical Therapy Association. He served in several roles with the APTA. He started out as vice speaker of the house, which is not an easy role. From there, he became a secretary of the national organization, and he finished by becoming the president of the American Physical Therapy Association, representing 90,000 plus physical therapists in the United States, where he served his tenure from 2000 through 2006, two consecutive terms. He retired from APTA in 2006 to return to his job with the Board of Physical Therapy Examiners. While president, he was awarded an honorary doctorate of science degree from Rocky Mountain University in Provo, Utah. So we welcome him today to speak to our students and it is with great pleasure I welcome Dr. Ben Massey. Good afternoon, Dr. Supina, Dr. Brulli, distinguished faculty, students, very proud parents, family, and friends. It is my pleasure to be invited to be a part of this commencement ceremony and to speak with you about the significance of the white coat and the profession of physical therapy. Before I begin, first let me congratulate you on your acceptance in the Wingate Physical Therapy Program. Until today, for most of you, getting in has been your primary focus. You've invested your energy in strengthening your application, building your GPA, expanding your extracurricular portfolio, and your volunteer hours. And wisely so, the competition for your seat is astounding. But today, you must start over. Your undergraduate GPA, your work, and volunteer hours mean very little in this program. You must humble yourself before you challenge and vow to become a better student, a more engaged student, a learner on a new mission to acquire all the knowledge and skill that this program has to offer, to learn the skills of collaboration with classmates, thank you, faculty, clinical colleagues, and patients, and most importantly, to recognize that it is no longer about you. It is about the patient, about the client, and about the health of our society. It is about how you can contribute as part of a much bigger profession, working together with others, not for professional recognition, but for the transformation of others. No doubt you chose Wingate because of the programs and the faculty's commitment to your success, a wise choice. I challenge you as a leader of the profession to own that desire for success and to recognize your own role and responsibility in its achievement. You are beginning three extremely intense years of educational and professional growth. PT school is no cakewalk. You will probably study more, learn more, work harder, play less, and sleep less than you ever have in your entire lifetime. You will question your abilities, your career choices, and your mentor's wisdom. But rest assured, when you finally achieve your goal of becoming a physical therapist, it will all be worth it. The first time you see a smile on your patient's face after weeks of pain because he is now pain-free and back to work because of your care, or a patient has taken her first steps after suffering a paralyzing stroke, you will get goosebumps. I remember it well. Knowing that you have made a significant and forever meaningful difference in someone else's life will make all the hard work, the stress, and the struggles worthwhile. Over the next three years, keep your eye on that goal. First, let me share a little history of the white coat ceremony. The ceremony originated at the University of Chicago's Pritzker School of Medicine in 1989 
but the first full-fledged ceremony was conducted at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. This ceremony was intended to mark the point of commitment of medical students to the obligations inherent in the profession of medicine, a commitment to the values outlined in the Hippocratic Oath, a promise to use their knowledge of medicine to serve the needs of others and to do no harm. In the past decades, as physical therapy has evolved to also be a doctoring profession, we too have embraced the white coat ceremony as an opportunity for students to formally commit themselves to the obligations associated with the privilege of clinical practice. I've had the pleasure of presenting at two of the white coat ceremonies for physical therapy students at Columbia and a number of other schools around the country. Participation in this ceremony, especially at the point of origination at Columbia, gave me a profound appreciation of its significance. It is not meant to be taken lightly, but to instill upon you the importance and responsibility of this rite of passage represents as you enter the profession of physical therapy. Students, today truly marks an important turning point in your lives. When you accept your white coats and you are, you are publicly acknowledging that you are willingly accepting your obligations and commitments as a health care practitioner, you are agreeing to become a healer, to learn and continue to learn your entire career all you can about the practice of physical therapy, to be a person who can be entrusted with the responsibility to use that knowledge to heal, to transform the lives of individuals, and to transform society. Today, you accept a serious and noble responsibility. This invitation allowed me to drift back to the days when I was a student. And I remember how I felt when I put on my first short sleeve white jacket, my official physical therapy name tag, and yes, my APTA shoulder patch and UNC patch. A few of you may remember the shoulder patches. I was decked out and looking good, or at least I thought so anyway. It took me a while to understand that these trappings of physical therapy were not meant to be signals to the world about who I was. I came to appreciate they were symbols of who I promised to be, symbols of my obligations to others. I still have my name tag, patches, and yes, my white jacket. I no longer wear them, but the values that they represent are still very much a part of my life. I'm excited to share this, I'm excited to share this day with you when you embrace these values also. You are entering a profession, the profession of physical therapy. You're not here just to get a degree and a good job. You are here to begin a journey as a professional. On June 26, 2013, the APTA House of Delegates, the policy-making rep, policy body representing physical therapy, adopted a new vision for the profession, transforming society by optimizing movement to improve the human experience. Transforming society by optimizing movement to improve the human experience. What does that mean? It means that as a profession, we are looking beyond an internal focus and self-serving goals to a vision that recognizes the contribution of the physical therapy profession to the health of society. According to the APTA, movement is a key to optimal living and quality of life for all people that extends beyond health to every person's ability to participate in and contribute to society. As a physical therapist, you will have the opportunity to engage with consumers in a manner that can reduce preventable health care costs and overcome barriers to participation in society far into the future. You can inspire others throughout society to create systems that optimize movement and function for all people. The APTA has put forth the following eight principles, identity, quality, collaboration, value, innovation, consumer centricity, access, equity, and advocacy to demonstrate how the profession and society will look when this vision is achieved. When you don your white coat, you're accepting these guiding principles as your own. 
beginning today and far into the future. I've been using the term professional a lot this afternoon. What does that mean? What does it mean to be, what does it mean to be a profession? What is professionalism? In the past, your colleagues have defined core values for professionalism. The first core value, accountability, is defined as active acceptance of personal responsibility for your diverse roles, obligations, and actions as a physical therapist, including self-regulation and other behaviors that positively influence patient outcomes, the profession, and the health needs of society. Gone are the days of placing blame on someone or something else. You are now accountable to a professional code of ethics. You are accountable for your own actions or for inaction. And you are accountable for the consequences of your actions or failure to act. The second core value, altruism, is defined as primary regard for or devotion to the interest of patients thus assuming the fiduciary responsibility of placing the needs of the patient above the physical therapist's self-interest. Occasionally, at the end of the day, you may be called upon to see a new patient that is in excruciating pain. Will you say, I'm sorry, I'm going to the gym? Or will you rearrange your personal schedule to accommodate this patient? Your decision will help determine how you view yourself and how your patients view you as a professional. The third core value is compassion and caring. Compassion is defined as the desire to identify with or sense something of another's experience, a precursor of caring. Caring is the concern, empathy, and consideration for the needs and values of others. It's the small things that we do for our patients that, we show, that show we care, especially our willingness to listen to them and to appreciate their perspective that may be different from our own. That, you're probably thinking, of course I'm a caring person. That's why I chose to be a physical therapist. But I ask you a question. Are you prepared to routinely call your patients at home on your own time to check on them if they've had a treatment that can sometimes increase pain? Will you follow up with your patients if they ask questions that you can't answer? Will you give them your undivided attention and thoughtful professional advice? Ask yourself these questions again in three years to monitor how high you score on the caring and compassion scale. The fourth core value is excellence. It is defined as practice that uses current knowledge and theory while understanding personal limits, integrates judgment and the patient perspective, embraces advancement, challenges mediocrity, and works toward development of new knowledge. Wow. Excellence is no longer the achievement of an A. This is a whole new ball game. It's not how, about how well you perform on an exam. It's about how well the patient performs as a result of your care. It's staying current, not being satisfied with today's knowledge, never accepting good enough, and always considering the patient's perspective. You are entering a noble profession and your white coat symbolizes your entry. I understand you're also about to recite an oath. An oath is a solemn declaration or affirmation to affirm your personal and professional moral commitment to caring for patients. It is a public expression of social responsibility. The essence of an oath is a commitment to placing others' needs before your own. In the ever-changing nature of healthcare today, it is important now more than ever for all of us to share a unifying proclamation of the ideals to which physical therapists subscribe. An oath that is based on the code of ethics explicitly affirms the standards and value upon which physical therapy is founded. Patients benefit in knowing that the profession subscribes to a set of accepted standards addressing morally and ethically competent care. Providers, in turn, benefit from the knowledge that the profession holds high regard for ethical practice and the rewards of such practice. We join in this commitment, and as of today, you are a part of something much bigger than yourself or Wingate University. 
You are accepting your role as part of a profession. Let yourself be inspired and inspire your colleagues to make this commitment freely, selflessly, and enthusiastically. I would be remiss if I didn't make a pitch for you to join APTA. Without the APTA, the profession of physical therapy would not exist. Belonging to a professional association is an investment in your future and a privilege. I hope that you will choose to join and maintain your membership and support your profession. The APTA serves as the unifying force of the profession, the representative body that defines our codes, values, policies, and practice. I would like to share with you a story that was emailed to me by an APTA member. A PT friend of mine, whom I'll call Joe, sent me this humorous story and he gave me permission to share it. Joe was a home care pediatric physical therapist. Joe was not exactly what you call an average looking PT. I guess you could describe him as a little alternative. He had shaved head, hoop earrings, wore a leather jacket, drove a Harley hog, and had lots and lots of ink. Well, Joe's patient load was in an area of town that we would not say is the safest neighborhood. Joe had been treating a six-year-old female patient with cerebral palsy, who we will call Megan, who put up a big fuss whenever she became fatigued. Well, as the story goes, one day Joe decided that he would take her to the local park to work on her balance and gait activities. After approximately 45 minutes of treatment, she had reached her max. She started to scream and cry for him to leave her alone, and she, had, she truly had a hissy fit. Joe was trying to calm her down when he heard voices behind him say, step away from the child. Put your hands up where we can see them. Get against the car, spread eagle. Joe turned around to see police cars everywhere and five policemen standing with guns pulled and trained right at him. Needless to say, Joe, a very intuitive individual, wisely did exactly as he was told. Evidently, there was a recent abduction of a young girl in that neighborhood by someone who fit Joe's description, and the neighbors had called Joe, excuse me, the neighbors had called the police when Megan started screaming and crying. Joe tried to explain the situation about being her therapist, so the police asked for identification. Joe reached in his wallet and whipped out his APTA membership card. <laughs> the day was saved. <laughs> Joe was relieved and sent me this story as a new benefit of belonging. The moral of the story, APTA membership card, don't get caught without it. <laughs> in closing, Again, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share this joyous occasion. I leave you with this thought. On the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, a special prayer is read in some synagogues. Birth is the beginning, and death is a destination, and life is a journey. From ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom. Good luck. God bless, peace be with you, enjoy your journey, thank you. We will now begin with the coding of our candidates. The coding will be carried out by our Department of Physical Therapy faculty and assisted by Department Chair, Dr. Kevin Bruley. As I call each student's name, I ask that you hold your applause until the end. Caitlin Arnsdorf. Matt Ash. Andrea Bagley.
Ross Blake. Shane Carroll. Rachel Cromer. Stephanie Devon. Kayla Dozier. James Dugas. Mark Edwards. Lisa Fawn. Caitlin Fox. Amanda Fraser. Mackenzie Gillis. Bryn Hager. Kelsey Helms. Taylor Helton. Caleb Hill.
Matthew Johnson. Adam Kasuf. Caleb Lynch. Tori McGee. Melissa Marcantonio. Christopher Marchand. Gillian McLean. Aaron Meadows. Kayla Moreau. Carla Pegram. Seth Perry. Lacey Peterson. David Pekarski.
Jessica Plant. Lucy Bogosian. Catherine Rand. Anthony Giovanni. Rubiat Shah Jahan. Brandon Shore. Joseph Sierra. Geraldine Smith. Casey Tarwater. Tim Weinberg. Jessica Williamson. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the Department of Physical Therapy, Doctor of Physical Therapy, Class of 2018. I invite the Class of 18 to join the faculty and I in reciting our profession's oath. I also invite any visiting physical therapists, physical therapist assistants, 
or students of physical therapy, I know we have several second and third years in the back, to please stand and follow along reciting the oath with me. Everyone else can follow with us on the oath as it's printed on the back of your program. Recite with me, please, once I find it. Ready? As a physical therapist dedicated to providing the highest quality care and services, I solemnly pledge I will respect the rights and dignity of all individuals who seek my service or with whom I work, act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my service, exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical requirements. Demonstrate integrity during interactions with colleagues, other healthcare providers, students, faculty, researchers, the public, and payers for the enhancement of patient care and the advancement of the profession. Enhance my practice through lifelong acquisition and application of knowledge, skills, and professional behaviors. Participate in efforts to meet physical therapy and healthcare needs of local, national, and global communities. Thus, with this oath, I humbly accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the profession I have chosen as a physical therapist. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Massey, for a great program. That was a great message. Our students are entering into a great profession, and I know those were great words. We enjoyed them very much, and I know they did too. Each year, our cohorts that come to us come with a different kind of a personality, a different persona about them as a whole, and the faculty, and I notice that each time. Every class is a little bit different. I've heard the faculty discussing their perceptions as a whole, and I can also say that this group is very unique also, like all the others have been. They hail from 12 different states. They're represented in this class are the states of Alabama, which probably had a good day Monday night, <laughs> Illinois, Indiana, Maryland, North Carolina, New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, and Wisconsin. They're from all over. In the eight short days that we've hosted these folks, the character traits that I believe will one day be the hallmark of the class of 18, burned in the memories of the faculty and staff, will include words like humble, gracious, sincere, and hungry for knowledge. You who are visiting us today in support of one of these fine young men and women, I want to tell you you've done a great job. You should be proud of their accomplishments and of their future. It is very bright. And we, the faculty, promise them and you that when they leave us in 35 short months, it will be 35 short months, trust me, that they will be ready to make a difference in their patients' lives. Hopefully, already today, they will tell you they've learned a lot. If they haven't already shared with you their initial shock upon arrival, please allow me to update you. Dr. Massey talked about this is going to be one of those three years where you lose a lot of sleep, you spend a lot of time studying, and you learn a lot about yourselves. Well, eight days ago, 42 of them arrived and thought they were arriving for orientation. You know, you hear all about the rules and the responsibilities, you get your picture taken, et cetera. Well, ask them how it felt when it was announced that they were to put away all their items on their desk except a pen. They were about to take their first exam, unannounced and unprepared. Now that exam had a purpose, I'm gonna let them explain that to you, so you'll wanna ask them about it. But next, it was announced that the following Monday morning schedule had changed. You see, the schedule they received told them that they had the morning off that first Monday morning. But no. They endured a three-hour marathon session of human anatomy, 
where Dr. Schupin covers an entire semester of material that they had learned in their previous undergraduate anatomy course, just to make sure everybody was at the same level before we hit the ground running after lunch on Monday. So good work, Dr. Schupin. Now add that material from their other five courses introduced this week, and I think you will have the explanation for the dark circles under many of their eyes. I would like to take a little bit of time to thank the folks who made today possible. First, I'd like to acknowledge the general supporters of today's event, Novant Health. Novant has been our sponsor now for the past three years. They've sponsored us each year and every year, and we are very grateful for their support. If anyone is here from Novant, I would love to be able to recognize you. If anyone is in the house, I'm not sure if anyone has made it today, a Roland or they probably couldn't find their way through all the smoke. That was a controlled burn. I was gonna get up and make a comment about Dr. Massey lighting the house on fire, but I went to forego it. But Novant also generously provides our snacks that we'll be enjoying here in just a few minutes. So we thank them for their generous support. I'd also like to thank Dr. Supernaw, our Vice President of Graduate and Professional Programs at Wingate and the Department of Physical Therapy faculty and staff for giving of your time today. Uh, we, we recognize that it is a Saturday and this is difficult on a lot of us to get here, but we really enjoy it and we wanna thank you all for your time of being here and for sharing this extraordinary day with our great students down here. And a special thank you to our event organizer, Christina Hollingsworth, wherever she might be hiding. Christina's in the back. She has put this whole day together uh, with the assistance of Christina Wagner and Natalie Clark, and I would like to recognize them publicly. Thank you for a job well done. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to take a moment and personally thank Dr. Massey for taking the time out of his busy schedule to come spend today with us and to address our students. You know, when I was a much younger therapist, we had a president who I admired and looked up to beyond belief. I recall he was an iconic superstar leader for our profession. It was a pretty big deal to me and my colleagues. I never in a million years thought he would be standing beside me addressing our students at a professional commencement ceremony, but I will ask that he come up here. I have a little something for him, and I will say that he wasn't a big deal. He still is a big deal, by the way. As you heard in his address, he has a long-standing history in leadership within our great profession, and he wants to see our next generation of physical therapists have some of that same passion to carry the torch forward. As I said earlier, I have not known this group of young fine men and women long, but I've learned enough about them to assure you that, that the profession is in good hands. We have a small token of our appreciation for your, for your efforts today. It's a small red wooden sailboat with a glass or acrylic sails, and it has his name on there. And thank you for helping the class of 18 set sail on the profession. So thank you, Dr. Massey. I now ask that everyone stand and remain standing to allow a closing prayer, followed by a recessional of the faculty and the students. After the recessional, we invite everyone to join us for refreshments in the rotunda, and I invite Catherine Rand, class of 2018, to come up and present our closing prayer. All right, All right let us pray. Let's take a moment for prayer. Good afternoon, Lord. We are gathered here today to start a new journey. With the support of all our close family and friends, all of us come from different backgrounds, but Lord, you have brought us all here today for a reason. 
This is in God's plan. We know that a new journey may not always be easy, but we pray to you for peace as we continue on. We pray that you will help guide us through so that we can serve you, Lord, through helping and serving others. We also want to give thanks to you for allowing each of us this opportunity in our lives. Thank you for the new family support system we have in our classmates and faculty, as well as our family and friends. And most of all, thank you for being there for each of us as we progress forward through the program. Dear God, please give us strength, courage, perseverance, and continued faith in this next step of our lives. Thank you, dear God. Amen.